We are ultra, live. Ultra, ultra, Mark. Yeah, I think so, was that A A A L U. U O S ultras. Oh yeah, yeah, U O S. I've not bought a, a ultra yet. Yeah, Super Farm. Yeah, got Super Farm. Got. Do you got Super Farm machine? Hey. It's a really big farm with lots of cows and horses. No, it's a virtual. It's it's a virtual pet. Oh no, it's, no, it's the horses, isn't it? Nah. That's time I got you, isn't it? Yeah, Garley. Have you got Garley? Garley James. Yeah, yeah. Bingo. Garley. Scallop. And then, and then you got like wild, wild, wild Too fishy. Price. Yeah, got wild worlds. Bought them in. Yeah, bought them a while ago. <clears throat> um, Solana's dropped to one fifty. Bought that. I'm in dollars. I'm in dollars, so I don't know what. Ah, I'm in pounds. I am. Yeah. Uh, Bitcoin's dropping. Yeah, keep out of Bitcoin at the minute. I've heard of that one. Why get on dollars? That's what the most of. Why are you on dollars? Most most people trade. <clears throat> Really? I just like dollars. I've 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 changed my. I'm working now from the metaverse. So instead of you working in, I'm I'm working as central currency, and the central currency is now dollars. So when you come to buy a Net caravan from us now, you're going to see dollars instead of pounds. But do you know what? Do you, do you know what? what? I prefer to take Bitcoin as a payment now than I'm I was just to about to pounds. say we should do it where. I'm going to be the first caravan dealer, and you should be the first <coughs> motorhome dealer that says we're going to accept cryptocurrency as payment. I'm it quite is happy. I'm quite happy to accept Bitcoin. Yeah. Ethereum, Cardano. Yeah. I'd go for more. Yeah. To be honest. Well, look That's at look at um, the one of the reasons that Amazon have just stopped. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Who's clicked live? I don't know. We're not live. Does we it, are. We're who, live. Oh, hey, oh, we've got Leo with a Sheba. What's the name here? He's obviously a we've crypto. Got David Trester Waller, Brian from Brisbane, Steph, Stephen B, Rob B, David Trevor, Calvin Shorts, Carl Mab. Oh, Calvin Shorts. I thought it was. I thought it was Tenting Shorts. John. So, um, remember when we used to do the lives last year, and I said to you about Pokemon cards. <clears throat> They went up, didn't they? Yeah. What we're we talking about now, Mark? Crypto. It's crypto. A, it's a future. Metaverse, Crypto's crypto a... gaming. Metaverse you can... is going to change the world. You're Facebook not going to go. To meta. You're not going to go on holiday anymore in your caravan or motor home. You're going to put a VR headset on. You're going to sit in your front room and you're going to go on holiday like that. And you're that not going to away. No, you're just going to sit in the front room. And we're going to sell virtual motorhomes and caravans. Yeah. So uh, if you'd like to buy a, uh, a virtual caravan <clears> or a motorhome <throat> with Bitcoin or Ethereum or any of... I'm not sure whether I'll accept Shiba. Good day, Shiba. Shiba. Shiba's worth nothing, though. It's 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 <clears> 0.0033. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a lot compared to what it is going to be. And yeah, NFT caravans. Why has nobody started doing NFT. caravans and NFTs? But what you could do with an NFT, you could actually sell your NFTs where people get service from you and put Lee, a twenty percent and put a twenty percent sell on clause. True, true. But like, just like, just like um, David Trest has just said, he's got a virtual caravan because he's ordered it. He's never going to get delivered, yeah. Yeah, no, you're never going to see it. <laughs> <laughs> If you've ordered a 2022 caravan. What's up, Shane? You're a bit quiet there. I think he's bored. He's turned his microphone off. He doesn't get it, does he? He doesn't get it. <laughs> Apologies <laughs> to the viewers. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be with you in uh, one minute. One minute. Yeah. The problem is, the problem is, Mark, is he's not seen the future, is he? No. And this is now the time that we've got to look at the future. We've got to look into the future of what is going to happen. Yeah. Uh, has the bubble burst? Has it burst? Or are we just entering into a new a new way of the future completely? Exactly. Exactly. We've just done a couple of videos, haven't we, earlier on, talking about uh, prices for 21, prices of 2022, where, where everything's going. And we thought, well, Mark's still hibernating for the last 18 months. I'm in work today. Yeah, but you're still hibernating. 
Well, yeah. So, uh, we'll wait for Shane to come back and then we'll we'll discuss prices for 2022. Well, as the, go on. We, we could hit on a, a subject at the moment of, are you still busy or has it quietened down? Because it's slightly different for Shane because he's supplying the dealers. Let me just get rid of this phone. You're busy, aren't you? <laughs> It's not stopped this morning. No, my zip won't work. And I can't get the phone out of my pocket. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Okay, right. So, are we still busy on the sales front? Or because it's winter, everybody expects now is the time to go out and buy your caravan because you're going to get the biggest bargain of the century because no one's buying. Um, uh, no, I think we're all right. No, you're all right. And um, so, what was I saying? Uh, supplier. Which one? Woodcrofts. Right. Hey, Woodcrofts are right, actually. Have you found um, the suppliers have actually smartened the game up yet? No. They've got no, worse. they haven't, have they? No, I... I'm, going to th- I'm just going to talk about this for a second, right? I'm sick and tired of nothing being in stock and having to order stock and everything. And I'm going to give a shout out to you, which I don't normally do. Um, <laughs> Leisure Shop Direct, mm-hmm. mate, that are not online. I've used them before. It's yeah, public, it's not trade. Yeah, mate, I'm... they are absolutely bang on. Next day, Ooh. we'll be no messing about. Who is not Leisure Plus? Leisure Shop, Leisure Shop Direct. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because I was going to you're, you're paying retail prices for your, for your things, but it's coming next day. No matter. Not, I'm sick of ringing suppliers up and saying uh, it's due in next week. Well, this is due in Friday. Yeah. Um, but it's 48 hours to three days for delivery. Yeah. And it's, um, it's a bit... Uh, and the problem is when, when you've got a van, especially if you've got a van and you're on a tight deadline trying to get a van out, uh, and then you try and order a part and it's uh, three weeks before you can have that part. Yeah. Well, that's just, that's just ruined your holiday next week, Mr. Customer. Yeah. Um, and... And it's the same with everything. Um, but I think people people this time of year, going back to what I was just saying a second ago, is they expect it's gone quiet, it's gone dead, uh, we're not selling anything, and now is the ideal time to, to buy. That's been um, traditionally throughout this industry, though. Forever. Forever and a day. That yeah. That is sort of what has found. But how have you actually found it's been this year again? Crazy. It's just not stopped, has it? No. I, had, I had a customer no. come in um, at a work a weekend a couple of weeks ago and had to be here on a weekend. It was shocking. I had um, work the weekend as well. And I had a chap come in and they'd, they'd travelled a long, a long way. And I'd said I'd, I'd hold the caravan for him until he could get here. And I'd, got, I'd actually got about three people. But I never try and sort of say to people, if, if they're coming to look at a caravan, oh, you best be quick because we've got three other people looking at that. I don't see the need to be able to do that. It's just literally, if if we're busy and there's other people interested, um, if you come in, I'll hold it for you, but I'm not going to muck about. So anyway, he's travelled down, um, gone all through the van. Yeah, lovely van, that. Um, it's quite this time of year, isn't it? Well, yes and no. Um, I'll give you a grand less than what it's on for. No, Sorry. So that's that's the price in the window. You knew what the price was before you've travelled. And everybody sort of thinks, oh, I'm going to be able to get a bargain. Um, and literally, it, it, it came to about £200 of where we were on the price. And I was still, look, the price is what the price is. Um, we, we just we can't afford to give the discounts because we can't get stock. I went through and showed him on Auto Trader and I said, look, the stock levels that are throughout the country, it's not just in the Midlands, it's not just this area, it's throughout the country, the stock has never been as low as it is right now. So we can't afford to give any discount. It, we've priced the van correctly. So we yeah. went away. Literally within two hours, um, somebody else that was due to come and have a look had found them and says, yeah, it's not been sold. You can come and have a look. They put the deposit on. Next morning, chap rings back up again. Are you going to take that £200 less? Said, no, it's sold. It's gone. And he thought I was joking. Um, yeah. It, it, it's still like that, isn't it? This market is still going and um, things are still moving along. Um, and it's actually the other way where we can't get the stock still. Let me just show you something. I've been doing a graph. 
Uh, for the Motor Own Monthlies, I, I do. It's not that. about crypto. No, it's not about crypto. I could talk all day about crypto, to be honest. Right. Now, I'm just going to show you this graph before Shane gets back. Um, hang on. Let me have a look. Share screen. This, I'm going to show you a graph now. And I've picked six of the main motor home dealers that sell new stuff and also second-hand stuff. And this is their second-hand that they've got advertised at the moment. <clears throat> uh, let me just show you this. See it? So you've got 21 branches throughout. Can you see that? I can see. Mark is 13 branches. They've got 30, 23 motorhomes for sale. This is used stock. <clears throat> so you've got there on the last the last one, 21 branches, and between them, they've got 111 motorhomes for sale. Scary. How are them how are them 13 branches gonna carry on, mate? They've, oh, they've he's gonna, back, Shane's back. They're going to have to change the way that they do business, aren't they? Yes. And and we're seeing that with, with Amazon because, again, they're, they're having to change the way that they're doing business and saying, right, we're not going to accept um, Visa anymore because of the high fees. And is it that we're going to have to look at things like that and sort of go, well, actually, 3% on £50,000, can't afford to take that loss. On, on no. that. Well, you look at what what is it? America, not make make it's American Express. It's five percent. Five percent. Yeah. One point yeah. five for credit cards. Yeah. It's a lot of money when it's ten, fifteen, thirty, fifty thousand pound. Especially when you haven't got the stock to be able to sell in the first place to pay your bills. Yeah, yeah. I can understand why Amazon have done it. It's basically two fingers up at the like. Look, we're not paying this. Yeah, and and it was just just after they've launched the round card, wasn't it? A month after they've launched the round card, and said, "Oh well, like you get special discounts and offers if you use our card now as well." Um, so I think there's this. It, it does two things, doesn't it? It reduces your cost, but I think the big dealers are going to have, and even us, we're going to have to look at ways to get get our costs down. Um, because if we're not selling as much because it isn't out there, um, and that sort of then brings us back round to what we were saying about earlier about the NEC. Is the NEC going to happen? Because it's a cost. It's a cost that you're going to send your salespeople to. If you've got nothing to sell, why, why are you doing it? Can you afford, this... as a big dealer, if you haven't got the stock, can you afford that extra money to do that? Shane, somebody wants to see you speak, Rob. <laughs> uh, it's a it's a difficult one. People have got to change. The dealers have got to change the ways, but I don't really know how they can do it. You know, like like we said in a previous discussion today, if 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 the stock's been cut by fifty percent, um, and there's no 2020, 20, 21, 22, and probably twenty three motor homes been built to anywhere here where they should do, I don't know where they can cut it arguably do they cut the you, you could probably say they even cut the sales staff to a certain extent and just have a couple of people taking orders virtually it all it all brings us back to the metaverse doesn't it <laughs> let's take let's take covid down there mark shane basically we were selling the vans online doing the videos and everything else and then people were just coming play uh, we're paying the deposits through transfer coming to pick them up and then just driving them away again. No interaction whatsoever. I think we still need the interaction um, when you're looking at a motor home because it's like a house. Yeah. Yeah, I think you've, you've got to trust who you're dealing with as well, haven't you? Especially especially when it goes more that way, you've got to you've got to have real trust in who you're dealing with, haven't you? Let's just start, let's just start like Brian in Brisbane there. If you stop taking credit card, what happens to the current customer protection provisions? Consumer yeah, Rights Act 2015. Exactly. Yeah. Why Why should we pay the, the credit card fees for their protection? I, I, I mean, think be, I send out a van properly and right and give a warranty and everything. But not everybody. their protection is, is me. Yeah, but I do. Yeah, so no, that's not an issue for me. Yeah, I mean, not everybody will do, but at the same time, you've still got the law behind you. Hmm. 
Yeah, there's still there's still the normal the normal law without that visa protection. Um, yeah, so yeah you've, you've, you've still got a leg to stand on, haven't you? Yeah, you, you've still got Consumer Rights Act 2015, where up to a month, um, if you've got a problem with the van, then you can just reject it straight away. After I think between one and six months, they've got one chance at fixing that problem, and then you can reject it. And then six to twelve months, it's it's slightly harder to uh, to reject it, but it's still possible if there's obviously persistent faults there. James and again, Preston Wallet, I didn't pay my caravan deposit with a credit card. I won't see it. Um, it will be March twenty twenty two. Worried now. Worried for what reason? No. The other thing is, has he got a van still to use, or has he sold his van, thinking, well, I'll sell my caravan now for a good price or motor home, sell it now, get a real good price, and then I'll be able to buy something cheaper or buy the new one, and then you end up getting hit with that that it's not coming for. Now, now there's a, there's a couple of there's a couple of questions just going up about all this actually. Now I just want to put this on this little gem that I found just before the show started. The biggest dealer in the country. And I can guarantee they'll sell probably the most volume out of one branch. But half of that is that because they've just had the, the stock level cut by 50% of what was going to be produced? Both. Yeah, both what they've had um, that's been cut and what they've already sold. So that's so, that's uh, Brown. It'll say, it goes that bring, okay, that brings us on to the Motor and Calvin show in February, right? Are Brown Hills going to go on the dealer Aldi stand? I still think done. I still think they will do. I think Elders are still there. Well, Elders are still going to go because they've already paid for it, from what I understand. So they're still going to be there. It's still a good way to future showcase your motorhomes. And if I was Elders, I'd be turning around saying, well, if you want this stock next year, then you best get to the show. Well, what's the point of a dealer going when well, they've already sold out the stock? They will excuse, me, excuse sure. me, excuse me, Brownells. I really like this Aldi that you, you're showing here at the NEC. I'd like to buy it. Well, you can't. Sorry, yeah, but I want to. Yeah. You can't. I've got one. You can order a 2023 one now, sir. If you pay us uh, a thousand pound deposit, and we'll see you in about four years' time. But it might not be like the one that saw you. Well, that's the you problem. Probably, probably how, how how do you know what you're going to be buying? How do you know what the price is going to be then? Well, what what a lot? Of, well, to be fair, what a lot of the companies have done, uh, particularly the summer of this year, going into next year, is they said, right, okay, we'll take a thousand pound deposit. It is refundable if the price goes up beyond, but expect a say ten percent increase. That's what a lot of the dealers did, not knowing what the price is going to be for twenty twenty two. That's the only way you can really do it. Ah, but if you actually start, if you start taking orders for 2023, you're going to happen. What's going to happen is something like what's happening with the gas and electricity companies getting bumped now, promising all that we'll fix the price for you. Yeah, we'll and then the price will go up, and they can't guarantee it. You wouldn't guarantee a price. Oh, hey, I want to buy this Aldi. Sorry, you can't buy it, but you can buy it for 2023. All right, we'll buy it then. Leave a thousand pound deposit, but we don't know how much it's going to be when you decide to pick it up. Correct. How and, much and that's change? that's literally that's literally what they've been what dealers manufacturers have been doing or dealers have been doing. They've been taking deposits, saying, "Well, it's roughly going to be a ten percent increase." Obviously, we can't tell you yet. If it goes up too much, you don't want it, then you can have your ten percent back. But if how you keep much? your ten, but if it, sorry, your deposit back. But if you keep your deposit there, then you are first in line for next year. How much has the Swift Escape gone up percentage wise? Uh, say 50, say well, nearly say eight percent, nine percent, something like that. So, what can we expect on a 23 going up then? Because if, if, um 22s have gone up by that. It's got to be the same again, hasn't it? Surely. I, I don't think it'll go up quite as much. Because like you'd expect you'd it's expect be... to get a little bit better next year. Well, That's right, in 2023. How much, how much 2023. Swift this year? How much is Swift gone up by this year? Apart from the Contiki's, which for some strange reason have gone down 10 grand, uh, escapes and stuff like that have gone up 9 grand-ish. 
Why have from they something down? I don't really know. Uh, well, within reason. So they went up about, I think they went up in 2019. They went up about 10 grand, but they did put in stuff like underfloor heating and so on. And I think they might have taken bits like that out. But it's a bit like um, the Swift Command panels. And I don't know if it's you that told me about this, Mark. The, the 2022 models have gone back to the old push button ones the high high spec models the high yeah. spec models still should have the screen in but yeah they've gone back five years on the panel yeah i think i think that's what they've done i think they've just despect it a little bit because it's and, too much hassle to try and get this, the spec and i'm now paying six grand more for it yeah doesn't make sense does it i, th I think uh, to be fair i think the spec on the escapes has gone up i think the quality has gone up it's just the contiguous that have come down, I think, in price and spec. Well, that's a good point that you're saying there, Mark. They've taken the control panels off, but you're paying six grand more. Nine. Oh, sorry, nine. nine. See, how, yeah. how long... I don't know. I don't know. And then, obviously, this now is going to have a big effect on next year... Just a um, quickie, Andrew Austin there, with prices rise, and I think a lot of vehicles won't be sold as customers won't be able to afford them. They've already been sold, Shane, haven't they? Yeah, they're, they're, you know, let's get this... Uh, 22 get stock this. is pretty much sold out, isn't it? Yeah, due to incredibly, incre incredibly high demand, we have now sold out to 22, 22 models, uh, modelly Eldis Evolution motorhomes. But that's pretty much across the board for anything, you know, whether you want a high, but you're looking at 18 months. <sighs> everything there's just not the stock around so the price doesn't really matter within reason so there's only so there's only one thing that's going to happen next year isn't it with prices used it's going to rise looking. yeah it's just going to rise again yeah so it's, as the ball uh, burst no. we're, we're, because... we're right down on stock um i i honestly thought that we'd have a little bit of a, a a gathering of stock over sort of this winter and we'll be able to really stock up and maybe february march it will will be fully packed up and ready to go and all that has happened is we've just dwindled dwindled down on stock um, i don't i don't know if you remember what you said to me probably six weeks ago mark which was just after we started to notice uh, six weeks eight weeks ago you was quite happy with your stock levels wasn't you ecstatic it was like brilliant we've got we've got good amount of stock we're paying the right sort of money because prices have took a bit of a dip um we were paying a little bit less so we, we could sell it out at a better price and um, so compared to some people out there our prices look fantastic um and i thought that was going to continue i thought right this call is me this call is me call call me got an ld sort of quest 155 for sale just give us the year and how much you're asking for it if you can sorry mark so yeah i i completely thought right we're going to see a bit of a sell-off over this winter there's going to be more stock we'll be able to stock back up and um, we'll be able to get everything at a bit better price come february march price is going to creep back up because of the issues with the no but it's just all sort of come out over the winter now and sort of hit us that actually the new stuff that was going to be available isn't going to be available um that cutting manufacturing by another however many percent 30 odd percent across the board um and there's going to be a lot less new out there than what we thought there we go 2010 30k for a 155 shane what's the question <laughs> the question is is the 155 aldi sort of quest 2010 worth 30 k with 35,000 miles. As a retail figure, yeah. The retail. Yeah, this it's heading towards that might just sit below. I haven't looked at one for probably a week or two, but yeah, it'll probably just I reckon if I was to guess, I'd probably say the dealers run between thirty and thirty-two. Right, that's sort of the, yeah, we've got a deal here. The motor showrooms <laughs> got one on it for thirty-one K. Yeah, so thirty yeah, so it's bang on then. So he's bang, he's basically bang on, hang on, Camper UK got one on for 30k as well. So he's actually asking dealer money for it, which is no qualms, any no qualms at all. But would he be able to, um, would he be able to give, um, 
a warranty? No, then that's the thing with selling privately. You you know, we talk people are worried about the credit cards and taking and giving payments to dealers, but then they go and buy privately. You've got no no consumer law or anything. But then again, you've got to understand that if the dealers haven't got the stock and you can go and buy it privately, what other chance have you got? You've got no other yeah. no other way to do it, have you? Yeah, for, for me, it's not. It's, that's not by no means any criticism at all. I th for me, th there's got to be enough of a gap to take it, take you away from a from yeah. a forecourt, you know, to to, yeah. to warrant the risk effectively. But over yeah. the last eighteen months, that's not been the case, has it? Because no. No. The, stock, the stock hasn't been there, and if you want it, you're going to have to pay for it, whether it's from private or from a dealer. Um, yeah. And I don't think that's going to change, is it? Even into next year, it's it's still going. It's a seller's market. The only thing I'm finding right. now, though, Mark, is we're now starting to get people are coming to buy the motorhomes. Now we're starting to get a glut of camper vans coming in. Now I don't mean camper vans such as like a Chagano or an Auto Sleeper. I'm on about the South Hill camper vans because yeah, a lot of companies yeah. have been making them. The conversions people have been going in them, finding the enjoy because that's the only thing they could have bought can buy for the money. Mm. Finding they're enjoying it. And then going, well, hang on, I don't want a sore back or I need a toilet. So we've seen a lot of people coming in with part taxis for that. It's a good entry into the market, though, isn't it, for people where they go? Very good. Mm, That's what's I happened, mate, through COVID. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. what's happened. Yeah. I don't want a big, massive thing because I don't know whether I'm going to like it. I can't store it. Um, I just want to dip my toe into the water. And that's the ideal thing. And, again, come February, March, that is going to be the thing, again, that is going to be a real good seller, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, we, we've never really dealt with camp, uh, camper vans before. Yeah, what I'm also because the market as well, because we, we're buying camper vans in as well, um, because it's more of a summer market. The camper vans, there's the amount of quality, and there's going to be some videos to follow as well. Uh, the builds, the build quality is shocking. Yeah, it's 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 definitely getting the right one. I mean, this. Yeah. So, the, the the reason why I mean we only tend to go for the main manufacturer ones, for the main reason being is because you don't know who's put the gas and electric together. Exactly, but I'm going to get a few a few videos out to show you some done by companies that are claiming to be professionals, and they ain't. I think yeah. probably someone's good at woodwork, but they actually don't know how to do the gas. And that's one yeah. of the most important gas and electric is is your two main important things, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah. was. I was. There's a couple. People there's a couple of things. Out, I go on, Jason. People are going out there buying a camper van, which they think is, is what it is, and it's not. It's yeah, because it's not been built properly. There's a couple. There's a couple of examples I remember in particular. There's one. One which was. Uh, hey, big... mate, Tim Bob. <laughs> it's my uh, my uh, my missus's fixed cousin, and she they live down in Cornwall. And they saw this camper van come up for, say, I don't know, 12, 15 grand in Derby. And they said, can you go and have a look at it? And I started looking through the photos. I was like, well, this guy is saying he's professionally converted them off his drive. But for a start, I can see that the gas bottle is rattling around on under the back seat. And what do you do with a gas, gas bottle in a, in a camp, caravan or motorhome? How do you store it? You tell us, you. In a metal box. <laughs> With a strap. Yeah, and I'm yeah, also but... seeing gas bottles with with the rubber hose going straight to the appliances as well. Which, Mark? Yeah, you can't have rubber. It's got to be... Uh, it's got, you've got to have your proper gas pipes in there. Um, and that needs to literally be pretty much from the regulator. There should be straight from the regulator all the way back. It should be proper copper piping all the yeah. way back through then. Um, and that's but... someone without regulators. So the moment you're switching yeah. the gas bottle and you're getting that. I'm glad people don't make flat pack caravans. Because I can only imagine what they would end up looking like. Yeah. So it's not, it's, it, it's not something that we sort of come across a lot, um, which is a, a, a good thing, really. And I suppose for you, it's an absolute nightmare then trying to figure out, OK, I'm looking at a VW. Is it a proper conversion? Isn't it a proper conversion? Um, so if somebody was to look for one of those, what are the things that you look for? What are the first things that you would look for? Where, the gas, is where the gas is stored. 
basically. Is it in a metal box? Has it got a drop vent? Um, check it is going to a regulator then, and then piping work. That's the first. And that's going to give one. you the first big hint of, has this been done properly? How, how good has this been know. done? Yeah. And then obviously where the battery's housed. Uh, but uh, gas is gas. It's dangerous. Yeah. Uh, and it, the second one is your crash tested beds. If it's not, why are you advertising it as a four berth with belted seats? Yeah, because a lot of those rock and roll beds have got the, the seat belts on, haven't they? Yeah. Um, whether it's just an off the shelf um, or whether it's a proper conversion. That, and for me, looking at one, I, I don't deal with them and I don't get involved with them. But for me, looking at them, if I was just going to buy one, I'd think, oh, yeah, it's got the seat belts in. It must be right. Yeah. And that, that, yeah. that's the problem, isn't it? Because a lot of people put the trust in somebody who's selling it as well. And that, again, then, I think comes back to the whole thing of um, with, like, the credit cards and if if it's, if it's we do end up going more into an online thing again, you need to trust who you're buying from, don't you? You need to have that trust. Um, and then will we find that big dealers, because they can't get the stock, are they going to end up selling stuff that they shouldn't really be selling yeah. just to make numbers yeah. up? Yeah, selling the bits that I've got issues, damp, yeah. mainly. K buy as a woman, I would be more for, for the layout of the van. Gentlemen do not buy motorhomes, women buy the motorhomes. <laughs> and again, that, that's the number one thing, isn't it? You want the layout to be right, and you probably then don't really, you, you're more looking after that side of it rather yeah. than thinking, oh, has that been done right? Has that been done right? But I yeah. think I think uh, the camper van conversion market is absolutely saturated now, with a lot of bad vans out there. Yeah, the only, the only I mean the other thing that I spoke to Jason about this the other day. How many sole camper van only dealers are you know like you've got caravan dealers, you've got motorhome dealers. How many sole car camper van dealers are there out there? Yeah, unless I think they're a converter and they're making their own, there's not that many, are there? It's, it seems to be more where they're doing their own conversion and then that's what they tend to, to sell yeah. rather than we're just buying all these in and that's that's all that we do. Yeah. Um, I, c I can only think of two, and even they are biased towards a certain brand. Yeah. Full stop, That's t which is amazing, really, how there's only probably two let's say there's i've mentioned a couple as well it's like Paul, dealers in, the UK. In, the, in the comment one main reason why people change wrong layout and it's always down to the layout they've got this idea and then once you start going motor roaming things change that's why you, you should never spend a hell of a lot of money on your first fan because it's never going to be the right one and that then again brings us back back all round round again this next 12 months where people are going, oh, it's going to go quieter, it's all going to drop off the cliff. If you look at all the things that are happening, we've had so many first-timers that have bought that have probably bought the wrong layout now. They've gone, oh, actually, we like it, but we don't like what we've bought, so we're going to look at swapping for layout. Yep. Um, we've got then the issue with all the new, so you can't get the new, so you then obviously have, have got to look at something used. Um so no, no way, no shape or form have we sort of hit the peak of where the market's going to be or go, have we yet? No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, you, you two boys know. Are you still selling at a very decent level right now for November? For November, yeah, yeah. I think what if, everybody else is sitting there, though, Shane, is saying, right, it's all going to go soon. You can start going on holiday now, and the planes are letting you go. They'll all go. The camper vans will drop. There'll be loads on the market. What's your thoughts? Uh, it, it just, um, I try not to get wound up about it, especially on Facebook and places like that when people are saying it. They've been saying it because they've been saying it for the last year, but they're not accounting for the fact that they've already sold out for 2022. So how can the used stock and the prices have gone up? So how can the used stock go down in price? If one, you haven't built enough for three years and two, if the prices have gone up, how can they go down in price when there isn't enough on the market in the first place? Plus you probably, let's say, I don't know, let, 
what do we reckon? What would we put a percentage on that the market has risen by in terms of customers? Oh, you people buy vans seventy percent easily. Can't okay, so so let more. Probably okay. So let all your sales. What, what we haven't had this year is we haven't had the glutter part exes that hasn't exactly. happened. Because people you look at all the vans. All your sales, it's all majority, probably 90% has been first time yeah. buyers, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So let's get, let's say it's gone up by 70%. And let's say over the last, let's say over the three year period, 20, 2020, 21, 22, new motorhomes has gone down by, say, 50%. Friday. How are you ever going to meet in the middle and, and for them to go down? Isn't it? You, let's say if you lost 50% of those new customers. You I'm never, just gonna you know, off and, um, I'm just going to just got to buy a van. I'll tell you which van we brought. I'm just going to buy this van and I'll be back to you in a sec. Because don't forget, folks, we are live, but we're still all working at the same time. I'm just going to buy this van. Hang on. <laughs> Look at me buying a van. <laughs> Is that the first one he's bought this year? Probably, yeah. I wish yeah. I could buy some caravans at the minute. Again, I, I, I seriously thought... Um, Come the winter, it, it would all change and we'd be able to buy some. Uh, and it just hasn't. And it's just all the reasons that we're saying there now. Um, we we had a lot of people sort of August time, August, yeah. September, where it, it just dipped off. And I think we had so many people saying, right, well, I'm going to sell now because there's going to be a massive, a massive glut of vans come to the market next year. Um and we'll sell for a really high price now, get the best price that we possibly can, and then come next year, we're going to be able to get exactly what we want, and we're going to get it a lot cheaper. Um, yeah. And I feel sorry for people that have ended up then doing that, sat there now with nothing, because it's going to be a real difficult way to get back into the market where potentially you've just sold what you had, um, maybe at an actual lower price than what things are going to be next year. Because yeah. it, I mean... It, it just just that supply and demand thing will drive the prices up anyway. But if the new have gone up by um, sort of six eight grand on the motorhome side, then what's going to happen to those two thousand and twenty one two thousand and twenty models that they're going up in price, aren't they? Yeah, I mean let's let's just go uh, slightly dive uh, diverse into a different avenue. Towing laws. I'll give you a good example, and we'll we'll get onto the reason why. We had somebody sell their motor home two months ago because he was going to buy a new tag axle as soon as he could, as soon as he sold his motor home. What's happened to that now? Is this a tag axle motor home or caravan? No, tag axle caravan. Yeah. We call them twin axles on our side of the... <laughs> what side of the, the, <laughs> the country? The Midlands. <laughs> Yeah, so, so he sold his motorhome thinking, right, I'll go out and buy a brand new twin axle caravan. Yeah. Because they announced that he could uh, he could now do it or he could do it in the near future because of his licence. Now, how's that looking for him right now? Not not good at all. Um, because you can't go and take your test. You, even if he says, oh, well, I, I, I've not got my B plus C, so I'll just go and do my test so I can tow something bigger. Can't do that anymore. Uh, I now can't tow anything over what I could tow before, so I'm still restricted combined to the three and a half. I think it will so it, it will change at some point, but when? And now, how how do you how do you buy a caravan on the basis that at some point you might be able to tow it? Yeah. And then again, if if the change in that law, why on earth haven't they changed it for the motorhomes and said actually? Let's just do it to seven and a half ton um, for your vehicle as well. That would have been a lot more sensible way to change that law. Um, and because all that I've done it is for is for the delivery drivers to not have to take extra or give them time to be able to go and do the tests, etc. And it's just not worked, has it? And that would have made up for the uh, motorhome. But but like you know like you're just saying then is if you wanted to get more delivery drivers on the road instantly. Can I just cut Surely. in, lads? No. Just two oh. seconds. 
He's an inside to what we have to deal with each week. Shane will know more about it. Shasson Welkin, 757. It's a 2018 van. Um, it took Steve three hours to get there. We've offered good money because it's good stock. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How was the, gar how was, how was the, uh, the garage, the back end? Damp. Hey? Damp. Oh, yes. Damp in the back end of the garage. Stone, stone chips <laughs> all across the bonnet. Stone chips all across the bonnet. Damp in the back garage. Two years habitation. Didn't bother carrying on doing his habitation. Um, basically. Um, electric wind out awning. That's bowed. Hmm. So, I mean, okay. just, just to go back there. That's a £50,000 retail van. 50,000, 52,000 £50, £50, Yeah. Retail bank. and uh, as soon as you said Shasta, and he's what did I say? Well, you go to the garage, don't you? <laughs> yeah. So, so that's you know, unfortunately, the customer has been. Well, if he hasn't had it serviced, you can't keep the warranty up. It's as simple as that. If you've got something new, some of these manufacturers have got ten-year warranties on them. There. If you don't service the them, comment, so the comment was, "Why are you taking so long? I've got meetings to go to." Hey. Didn't, didn't buy it then. The, the, the chap actually said, why are you taking so long? Because I've got meetings to go to. We spend, yeah. we spend 40, 50, 60,000 pounds on vans, right, which we, we buy then and then. People buying houses at 60, 70, 80,000 pounds, it takes a month. <laughs> yeah. So this, this is just a quick insight to where the market is. And Jason's absolutely spot on with the valuation for retail on that, by the way. Um, which was you said it was around fifty two thousand, did you? Fifty fifty two thousand pound van, isn't it? Three year old. Okay. Well, we're, we're going to have to class it as a four year old van now, two thousand eighteen. So this is this is where it's also difficult from the dealer's point of view, as well as the private customers, because these vans will probably be retailing at something like seventy five. Uh, sorry, sixty five thousand now, something like that. If you were to buy a brand new one, the equivalent model, this. Is what that van would have cost new three years ago, and this is how much the prices have gone up. Yeah, that number on the right hand side 53440. Brand new, yeah, that was the price from, new. yeah, in 2018, obviously. Frightening, isn't it? And like I said, what your, what price you said, 50, 52, that is exactly where it should be. That's where it sits in the market right now. But because the new ones have gone up to 65-ish, it means well, the used ones. Well, here's your problem now. Somebody else is going to buy that van. Yeah, because yeah. they just not, they need the stock and they're, they're not that bothered. It's it's just literally so a case of... van goes back out on the market with damp in the back. Yeah. There are, there are some places that will buy it just to repair it, aren't they? Uh, well, yeah. you've got to buy you've got to buy it cheap enough to repair it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to take that now, into consideration. Now, when you've got somebody there who who's seen them for fifty two thousand pounds, and you to come along and say what you've said, they're going, "Oh no, 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 no!" He's just trying to rip me off. Hmm. But they're not taking into account that that damp might be two, three grand to repair. You don't know until you get an IT, do you? As you're well no. aware, Mark. Yeah, until you actually start stripping things out. You can think it's come from one area, start stripping it out, and you've just opened up a whole can of worms because it's from something completely different. And do you really want to start doing the work on a £50,000 van? No. That hasn't had its full habitation checks and kept in, kept in with warranty. Yeah. Because then it's your responsibility when you sell that on. Uh, it's now no longer manufacturer's warranty. Yeah. Uh, you're the one that's done the repair work. You're the one that's got to warranty it. And, and, and that just... Can, anybody can point me out wrong as well is with chass on even if you have it habitation checked by aws they still don't recognize it you have to use it chass on a proof dealer i think more might be allowed me there no i've not got the sure, not sure i'll cut you what let me just well, have a look think... at the matrix and just just and just to go back a step as well you know we talk about service and everything like that the problem with the man with a dealer is if you buy something that's say a 2020, it's got um, it's got its habitation services and everything like that. Dealer goes out to buy it and it's got damp. What's the waiting time to get it into a 
Chasson uh, main agent to get that repair done? We we had a floor issue with a burst, burst yeah. uh, and it was getting yeah. up for nine months to have it repaired. Yeah, so that is, you know, that is also the problem that some dealers are taking on is if they're buying something a year old that has been serviced, so they've done all the right thing, um, the dealers can't necessarily do anything with it because there's a nine-month wait. And who's going to want to put, say, £50,000 into something ah, that they can't but, sell for, for nine months? But you say, well, yeah, I suppose from the dealer's point of view. But then again, if, if at the moment you're sort of thinking, well, I know that the market's going to be good in nine months' time. Is it another stock to fill at that point? But then do you want to – I don't know. It's difficult, isn't it? It's difficult yeah. how, how to look at it because you can also look at it and say, well, we've not got the stock, so we're better off having something that in the future we can sell because I'm fairly confident that the market isn't going to come crashing down in the next 12 months. Uh, this is when, when, when I think you're probably the same as me, Shane. When you go, when we go out picking bands up, if people are honest with the descriptions, whatever we've offered, we don't quibble with anybody. No, I mean, it's, it's, for us, it was, uh, February is a great month for us, where I think um, we paid what we planned to pay on the way out, something like just under ninety percent of the motorhomes we bought. We just had a really good run where everybody was just dead straightforward and honest with what um, what was wrong with it. And the the ten percent that weren't right, it was just because there was something quite significantly wrong with it, quite expensively wrong with it. Yeah, yeah. It's just, just about being honest. Back, so, yeah, always, I, I, always, I, always, I, don't we? Yeah. Just going back onto your chassis. On, um, no, AWS can't service them. It's not covered under the. Uh, yeah. So the guys had yes. two couple of, couple of AWSs and it's not even recognised, so they wouldn't touch it no. anyway under warranty. No. Which I so, think so I, they, I think shocking that is on Chasson. Yeah. yeah. Look at, so so look that's I mean that shows how bad that is. It just goes back to what I said about a dealer. If you're buying one that has had its service, it's 2019. It's had both. Uh, yeah, it's had both of its yearly services, so it's under warranty. But you've got a problem. But if you want to book it into a Chasson dealer. You've got to take it back to probably the original one that sold it, by the way, because some of the main agents are getting really bloody fussy. And then it might be nine months until you get a return on your money. There's a good point from David. Track really can't cancel all lost deposits back to back of the queue or get an overpriced second hand caravan. Some are more expensive than the new ones. See, so, yeah, the, the problem. I, I agree with most of that. The only, yeah, the only thing I don't, they're not overpriced. No, they're not. That's the only. That's the only point I'd pick out of that. That they can't be overpriced if they're all that price, and if they're not going to necessarily go down from that price. Yeah, which in the next twelve months, prices aren't coming lower than what they are at the moment, are they? No. No. It's going to be 23, 24 until the levels, new build levels are starting to get back to normal. Yeah. And, and like again, I said, and then, and then you've still got 21, 22, sorry, 20, 21, 22, 23, where you're never going to replace them vans. A few people in the comments that have not even had the 2021 vans delivered yet. Hmm. Like we're, they're now producing 22 vans, or supposedly. Um, it's, 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 it's David's come back again. He says if a second hand caravan is more expensive than a new one, it's overpriced. Well, um, yeah, have, you not, got a couple, have it, you not got a couple of classic cars that cost more than what they were? <laughs> yeah, but that's that's not that's not equivalent, is it, to what he's saying? Is and and no, no, we, I agree. we have had it. We we did have it last year where we bought a couple of brand spanking new Aldises and we actually sold them. Because you couldn't get one, we, we, we sold them about £500 more than what they would have been. But it's the case of, well, if you can't get one and that's what you want, um, then we we ended up paying more than what it would have, a dealer would have cost. Yeah. Bought it for it, brand it, new. It's all, that, it's all that supply and demand. Again, just going on a smaller scale, for example, you want to go and see 
the European Cup final and all the tickets are sold out. You're going to go on to it. Yeah. And then you're paying £500. Yeah. Yeah. And look it's... at the websites that do that and make all the money from, from doing that. Um, and it is it is then the same thing. And again, it's you are going to find that if you can get something fairly new, it's, it's number one, it's going to be more than what it was brand new because all the 2022 prices have gone up. So it's it's difficult to sit there and go, oh, well, it was only 25 grand when it was brand new six months ago, and you're asking 28 grand now. But the equivalent new is 30 grand. So, and you can't get one. Here's There's a good question a from Mark. Great one, Maris. Should I wait till the NEC Caravan Show to look at a new car, or should I go to the deals in January, as there may be none left? There isn't any left already, so go now. <laughs> yeah, go get it, get it online today. And you yeah. might, and you might get, I mean, you might get one for su for summer twenty twenty three. We've just recorded a video talking about the NEC show. Mark, you don't think there'll be an NEC show in February? I don't think it's going to happen. They've just cancelled Why... the Manchester one. Yeah, and I think the NEC within the next couple of weeks, you're going to see the NEC show get cancelled as well. I really think that it's going to get cancelled. Shane, you disagree? Why? I think the the manufacturers, manufacturers, and uh, and the show organisers too much money into it already. I think that they're better going. Let's just take the bit of a loss that we've had now. Yeah, well, that's that's what I'm trying to say. I don't, I think I don't think they've got much more they can put into it anyway. You reckon they've probably already hundred percent paid up and. Yeah, I think they're about there. If that is the case, um, then, yeah, fair, they've not got anything to lose, have they? Unless all the dealers turn around and say, well, no, we're not we're not going to send the salespeople and we're not going to pay the money that we were going to pay to be on the stand because we've got nothing to sell. But, uh, but even then, surely it's a good showcase. You know, we're talking of going back to layouts earlier on. Um, surely a show like that is the best way to get people looking at different fans at different layouts and planning what they're going to get in a couple of years time when they've had a life with this one yeah but if you're, you're new, if you're a new if you're a new dealer mark selling new new caravans right would you go to the show if i if i've got a big if i've got 200 vans to sell yes if i've got 20 vans left to sell no so if you if you were selling aldis motorhomes just like brown hills and sold out would you pay no your money chance. and go to the show no chance if I'd already just go... money and it was already spent out, then yeah, fair enough, and I'd committed. If it was a case where I was coming up and I was going, right, I've now got to pay, I've got to make the decision. If I pay the money to send all the salespeople or I don't, I'd be saying no, no chance. And what I said on the previous video is I'd have a little banner next to me that I can cross off. I'd have every motor home that I've got left on for the rest of the year. And when it's when just say, look, this is what I got. Come to me if you want one. Can't do any refunds, because, sorry, um, discounts because there isn't any discount to be done. So I haven't got. You can see we've only got ten left. And just do it that way. That I'd so do that. And I'd also what Brown, Hill, what Brown Hill should have done was not sell all the Aldis. He's gone to the show and put the prices up. There was a. There was. I mean, this is going back 30, 40 years, but there was a. a dealership that started up near me and the reason he started up was because he went to uh i think it was swift or someone like that and he bought he said right okay i buy the whole lot that you have got everything that you've got i will buy the lot and then they ended up going to him for uh for their stock in a similar demand you know 30 40 years ago what about the show insurance if they cancelled yeah, we said about this earlier, didn't we? Uh, I don't think the insurance is going to cover them, is it? If if it were to be cancelled. And we're not saying that it has been cancelled for the NEC. The Manchester one has been cancelled, but the NEC at the moment is still saying that it's going ahead. Um, but I, I think that it's going to get cancelled because... Uh, and then I don't think the insurance is going to cover them. No, no that's because that's the, they would have why would the insurance cover it? there's no reason for the insurance to cover it i mean i don't think they could have took this... and said if we've got nothing to sell we want insurance against that can so... yeah the, the, there was um there was a rumor going around like i just take it as very loose figures but there was a rumor going around that if 
they would the organizers would were to have cancelled the show it cost them a million pound the thing is though they committed though aren't they because they, they don't just ring That's up in mean. january and say can i book you for february well no rod stewart's playing they've obviously committed for about three five no, years no. aren't they but then how long would the manchester show have been booked in advance but we're talking different scales the thing is, if they have some type of show, show mark, right, they're still going to get a revenue from the ticket sales. And at the end of the day, I like Shane. Me and Shane would like to go there just to have a look at the different models. Yeah, yeah. In the in the comments, let us know if the NEC goes ahead, but there's nothing to actually buy, caravan-wise, but you can still see some, will you go? Will you pay the money and go? Well, here's another one. If there's only excess... After, what, is there all these accessories available or tents available either? I don't think the stock's no, there on anything, is it? So you could be going to a show where you don't buy anything. It's just a show. And then what are they showing at the show that hasn't got anything to show? Well, they would be showing well, something. You just can't buy anything at the show. Well, just, I'm just going to take it back. I'm just going to go back to that Manchester show that we talked about. I'm just having a quick look at who were originally yeah. exhibited in it and it was mainly dealers not manufacturers so as a dealer there isn't no there isn't there isn't does any that, reason to want to go does that not say to you then for all the dealers are just going to turn around and go well what's the point of going to the nec I, i'm not disagreeing with that but it's the manufacturers that are paid for the stands already yeah well the but dealers, the dealers paid to go. Gonna, they've, they've got to pay i know they are yeah, they have got to, yes, but regardless, Elvis, for example, have already paid their money to be at the show. Whether the dealers go makes no difference to their money. They've still got to go. They've I already paid. Realistically, it's no point in sales people going anyway because they've got nothing to sell. So just come and have, a, we'll just have tour guides. <laughs> That's an interesting comment there that Bob's just put up. I've never gone to a show to buy anything, just interested in what's available see i would have always said historically before this that the show is exactly the place you want to go to buy because you will never get so many different dealers in one location that are doing stupid discounts to get your business that's obviously pre-covid but pr previously yeah dealers that dealers and do discounts that you sit there the other dealers think are they Hell have they done that? We haven't even got that, that profit that, in that. That's a very good point because it's a it's a it's a tough gig for the dealers, isn't it? The shows. Yes, yeah, it's, it's cutthroat. All fighting one another. Yeah, yeah. good word, mate. Cutthroat. We we always used to say the ones that go, oh, I've, I've sold however many today. Well, no, actually, all that you've done is just bought a load of expensive used stock. That's all that they've they've done. They've not made any profit out of what they've actually sold. All that they've done is just give silly money for the part exchanges. So you've just bought a load of really expensive stock. And that's that's 99% of how the dealers work at the at the NEC. He's just trying to get the used caravans in um by selling by selling the new. And that again is well why the NEC why show would be advertised as an exhibition only. It's just basically what we're on about, really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Can I, I'm just going to uh, post a couple of photos up. I don't know how well this is going to work. You know, you're talking about your your chasson you just went to see. I don't know if you can really see this one that we've just gone out to. Are you on the same one? Are you having trouble buying a van today? Yeah, this is an auto trail. Now, the blue marking around the skylight and the crack in the ceiling board. Yeah. That... That the strips in that roof don't look original. That looks like it's already been bored yeah. in, at some point. Windscreen. Ooh. This is, uh. How did the chap describe the van? Excellent. That's not good. Uh... There's another photo on there, but I can't show it because of the reg. This is this is why we always say to customers, come and have a look at the caravan yourself, because our description, now what we think 
is awful or what we think is great can be completely different to how you look at it and what you think. And what some people will look at that and go, what year is it? Uh, this was described as very nice. The roof light has been repaired. And what year is Let's it? Let's have a look at the roof light again. <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know. A minute. I, just, I just need to find the original notes on it. Looked like an O5 or something like that from that bumper. I go yeah, 06, say. yeah. 06, so all the trail. So again, with the age, you've got, to, you've got to expect some, probably not a big like leak in the roof, but... Yeah, absolutely, for the age, you've got to take that out of coat. Yeah. <laughs> 18, is it? You can have it if you want to, Jason. I'm sure that'll go straight on your forecourt. I'll be taking the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea, actually. Selfies, hey, what did you yeah. Just pay for drivers to take everything to the show. I know that sold, but when it's described as very good, apart from a small leak that's been repaired. So I think That's exactly what you said, Shade. It's just a day out. Yeah. A lot of people are just... It is just to have a look and um because you're not going to be buying anything are you and i don't know whether there's going to be much in the way of accessories at the nec either i know that um a lot of the awnings and stuff like that are sold out um again prices are and it's everything isn't it price you look at everything you look at inflation at four odd percent that it's, everything is just going up Absolutely, yeah. everything is going up. So it's yeah. just it's just the world that we're in at the moment, um, and uh, it's just how it is. So don't expect caravans or motorhomes to be coming down anytime soon. Next year, prices are going up, new and used, and you probably you're going to be in the same situation as what we've been in for the last two years, aren't you? Where the stock isn't there, new and used, you, you're just not going to be able to get the stock. Uh, and unfortunately, that is just going to have one effect on the price, and that is is up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're definitely going up again next year. Like I said, how, you know, how, what was a forty? Well, I say what was a forty-eight thousand pounds Swift Escape this year just gone? When they've gone up nine thousand pounds, the dealers aren't going to be far off buying them for that sort of price. Yeah, like I say, last last year we were paying. For brand new Aldis, a couple of Aldises, we paid more than what the dealers would have bought them direct from Aldis for. But it was a case of, well, if we haven't got it, we can't sell it. Um, and we're pretty sure that we can actually charge a bit of a premium on what it was brand new because you can't get one. Um, and, and people, it's just that case of if you can't get it and you, you can then find one a little bit more expensive, if you want it, you're going to have to pay the money or you don't. Don't argue and don't moan about it because you're not going to get it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are you actually making money in these times? I, I, th I think the best way to sum that is up. A sum that up is a dealer I spoke to the other day who was genuinely very, very concerned about the coming year um, because of the lack of new stock that he's got coming through and bearing in mind he's never had to go out and buy you stock so he doesn't really know how to do it and he said it's a good job i've just had a relatively decent 18 months otherwise i don't think i'll be able to get through the next 18 months it's, it depends how these it depends how much these dealers step up in the next 18 months and actually be proactive not just sit there and wait for customers to come to them It's going to be a very, very telling time, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And then as a customer, you've got to be a little bit worried if you're placing your deposit with somebody for 12, 18, two months, two years down the line, is that dealer still going to be there? And that, I think, is where you want to be paying your deposit, buy a card so you've got some protection. A visa. Um, <laughs> what about the downturn in diesel and petrol engines and upturn in electrics? Will it turn the market downwards? No, you can't even buy. You can't even buy a car with a decent range at the moment. So I think it's that far away. Oh, wow. It's irrelevant. The infrastructure isn't there either, is it? 
No. no. You, you, go, you go through some of the terrorist streets in London, work out how to charge a car on them. Yeah. Or you drive on a Tesco supermarket with 300 car parks, spaces, and there's yeah. two charging points. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just not, it, for me, it's, it's, it's that far away. You know, you're not going to uh, be able to plug 20 cars into a lamppost. The power was not there in the ground to be able to source these cars. It's, to get it's going to be like the towing law. They're going to say, right, this is when we're changing the law and we're going to change all about this towing law. It was, it was a, sorry, it was, a, it was a political thing, I think, the, the electric car oh, statement, yeah, wasn't it? Exactly, exactly the same with, with the towing law, where they've said, right, this is what we want to do by this date. And then as it gets closer, they're going to go, actually, we can't do that. So we're, we're now going to have to change the goalposts and... So and and I think things will progress with with hydrogen. Um, they're, they're, they're looking at different ways to do the dish, uh, diesel engines, aren't they now? And I think we'll probably see more of the. Uh, I know that we went to Land Rover. We was having our car service, and he says we're actually putting more. Or Land Rover is putting more development now into the um, the hybrid. So you've got the petrol and a bit of electric. Yeah more than just all electric because the the infrastructure firstly just isn't there for all electric um and secondly we're still so far away um from actually getting to that point that it's 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 not really worth us spending all the time and effort and money looking at yes we need to look at it um but if if everything gets changed and the goalposts all of a sudden change and we spend all this money developing electric cars that will then turn around and say oh well actually yeah, it's it's not really feasible, and we can now do yeah. this. Well, Luke, what's just happened with the um, with the rail? How they stopped? Uh, they're not going to do it through um, the north. Yeah, it, the uh, HS two. Uh, that's it. Yeah. I kept thinking H two O. H two O. Charges and power. <laughs> Here's a good question. Is the supply of new motorhomes a supply problem or a demand issue, Simon Barrett? Supply issue. Yeah. Because if the motorhomes or the caravans are there, there's never a problem, is it? No. no. Yeah, yeah. What did you say the answer was? Supply issue. Supply. But it's both. That's chicken and egg, isn't it? It's both, yeah. I and mean, there's a supply issue. There's a supply issue and a demand issue because obviously it's been too well, it's both, yeah. Yeah. People want what there's not enough of. Enough of. But yeah. So the question is: Has the bubble burst? Yeah, it's burst. It's all gone tits up now. <laughs> Yeah, if it, it, it's definitely burst. If you can give me a call on and sell me your motorhome, that would be lovely. <laughs> if you're out there with a caravan... Yeah, so the best time now is to be today. selling your motorhome. If you yeah. can get in touch with us for selling yeah. your motorhome, uh, best time to sell it now, um, especially with winter coming up. They've given out a really bad winter. <laughs> it's a new bigger bubble. If yeah. uh, it's a PA, I'm not being rude. My battery's just about to die, not long off. So, uh, well, we'll wrap go for that. Um, yeah. In a nutshell, as a bubble burst, no, it's not. Um, do we think uh, the show's going to be next year? Me and Shane think it's going to be on. Mark says it's not going to be on. Um, so we'll see what happens, eh? Yep. All right. All see you everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. I've been me.